Hello everyone, welcome to this session. In this class, we are going to attempt a very specific and beautiful problem of vibration wherein this sphere is oscillating within this semicircular arc. Instead of sphere, we can also consider a cylinder. So how we will derive the mathematical model of this system and how we will write the equation of motion of the system. So this is a problem which looks very complicated in the first attempt but let me tell you this is very simple problem and after the end of this lecture you will understand that how simple it was. So let's start. You can see here that the sphere is oscillating and we can consider that this is the mean position this let's this one position is the mean position of a sphere and I want to derive the equation of motion and for that I am going to apply the energy approach and what we do in energy approach in energy approach we consider the system at any instant of time and we write the total energy of your system and based on the principle of conservation of energy we say that the total energy of the system will be a constant actually what is happening here you can see here that when the system is at the lowest position the total energy of the system will be the kinetic energy if I am considering that this is my datum position. So the potential energy when the system is at position 1 will be 0 and when the system will be at its any of the extreme position whether the right one or the left one the total energy will be the potential energy and what is happening in between the potential energy is converted into kinetic and so on. So this is a problem which is a combination of Rotated, rotating motion of the sphere on the surface of the semicircular arc at the same time it is having a swinging motion so what we can visualize here we can visualize that this is a combination of a pendulum as well as a rolling motion what is happening actually you can see here that this cylinder is not simply just moving and there is a friction actually the cylinder is rotating as well as swinging so there are two motion and if you will recall a simple problem I am not going to solve this problem here but if you are interested you can watch my other videos suppose I am having a spring and connected at the center of this disc and the disc is exhibiting rolling motion without slip so please understand I am explaining here I am ex exclusively I am stating that the motion is rolling without slip roll without slip that means what that means the velocity of this point which is in the contact with the bottom will always be zero and for this case we can write the equation of motion by considering both translatory motion of this cylinder or the disc as well as the rotatory motion and we can write the equation of motion by considering the total energy of the system that will be 1 by 2 i theta dot square plus 1 by 2 m x dot square plus energy in the spring so this is the kinetic energy of this disc which is having a rolling motion on this flat surface now if I will visualize this system here also we are having a rolling motion but instead of having a rolling motion on the flat surface it is a curved surface so what will change here here also we are going to have this rotating part of your kinetic energy but instead of having this translatory part again we are going to have a swinging motion part that can be written as 1 by 2 m omega dash square what is omega dash omega dash is actually angular velocity about this point what is happening the roller or the sphere is having a swinging motion like a pendulum so here we are going to consider a system which is having a motion like a pendulum at the same time the system is also having a rolling motion but what is important here here we have to understand the relation between the let's I am having this angle as alpha and the rotation is theta so we must understand that what is the linear velocity of this system and what is the uh, velocity when it is having a rotating motion so if I will come back and write the total energy, the total energy will nothing but the combination of the kinetic energy as well as the potential energy. So for this purpose, 
let's consider the system at any given instant of time and we will like, write the equation for the system so suppose this my semicircular r and this is the mean or center position this is let's the datum position i can define that at a given instant of time your cylinder will be here and suppose for a given instant of time t this is the position of your sphere and the system has made an angle alpha from its mean position it is still going in this direction so i can say that this is the velocity in the uh, this direction and which can be written as alpha dot r minus r where r capital r is the radius of this semicircular section and small r is the radius of this sphere so here i can define that the velocity of the system which which is having a swinging motion can be written as alpha dot r minus r at the same time the system is having a rolling motion and for the rolling system we know that the velocity of the center if the something is rolling or pure rolling without slip the velocity of the center can be written as r theta dot where the theta is the rotation about its own center so this can be also written as theta dot r this is one of the important expression in overall derivation of the equation of motion of the system now the second part of this is the potential energy so the system is having a potential energy because of this height and this height can be explained in terms of this difference of the radius if i will complete this right angle i know this is angle alpha so my height can be written as r minus r 1 minus cos alpha so if i will write the total energy expression there will be three types of energy one kinetic energy because of the swinging plus kinetic energy because of the rotation plus potential energy because of the height h so these three expression i have to use 1 by 2 i i about what i about the center of rotation let this is the point o so i am writing it for the swinging so i nod alpha dot square plus second is the because of the rotation about its own center so it will be 1 by 2 i which is about the cg of this body maybe the sphere or the cylinder and the theta dot square plus 1 uh, that is the mgh so i will put mg into r minus r 1 minus cos alpha and this entire expression will be a constant because we are following the energy approach which says that the total energy will be a constant and therefore the time derivative of the total energy will be a zero quantity that is going to give you the expression for your governing energy here i can replace the theta by alpha using this expression so my theta dot will become what theta dot will become alpha dot r minus r by r so when i will put this theta here my expression will become what 1 by 2 i not alpha dot square plus 1 by 2 i c g and i will have r minus r square by r square alpha dot square plus this mg and r minus r 1 minus cos alpha what is the value of this i not so i know when i will see a simple pendulum and the pendulum is swinging for a given instant of time the it's a Uh, moment of inertia about this point of rotation will nothing but the m l square if the string is having length l so here also if the mass of this sphere is m i can write this 1 by 2 this m and r minus r square and the alpha dot square so if i will write the entire expression it will become alpha dot square plus 1 by 2 icg icg means if i am considering it as an sphere solid sphere icg will be 2 by 5 mass into r square if i am taking considering it as a cylinder so this is for sphere 
and 1 by 2 m r square this is for a cylindrical body so based on the given condition you can change this icg value as a sphere as a sphere or cylinder so i am still i am considering it as a icg r minus r square by r square alpha dot square plus this expression and when i will differentiate it i know that the half is going away because of this square value and my expression will become what so let's write half m r minus r whole square 2 alpha dot alpha double dot plus 1 by 2 i c g and this r minus r square by r square let's remove this and again 2 alpha dot alpha double dot plus when i will differentiate this term i will get a sine alpha term but if i will assume alpha is very very small i can simply replace this sine alpha with alpha only so i am writing the final expression that will be what m g r minus r alpha alpha dot is equal to zero so this is the expression for your governing energy governing governing uh, equation and if you will rearrange all other terms the alpha dot here alpha dot here and alpha dot here will go away r minus r square r minus r square and one r minus r so it will go away plus this half will cancel out from here also and finally the expression will become what the expression will be 1 uh, m r minus r alpha double dot plus i of the body about its cg r minus r by r square alpha double dot plus m g alpha is equal to zero and if i will further rearrange then i will get m r minus r plus i c g r minus r by r square alpha double dot plus m g alpha is equal to zero so if i will write the expression for the natural frequency the natural frequency of this system will be under root m g by r minus r within the bracket i will have m plus i c g by r square and if this is a cylinder let's we are having a cylinder so my i c g will become what 1 by 2 m r square and this r square is here so it is going to be cancelled and i will have 1 m by 2 so my expression of the natural frequency will become what i will get m g r minus r within the bracket i will have m plus m by 2 so ultimately the m is also going to going away and this will be 3 m by 2 so ultimately i will have 2 g by 3 r minus r and if it is a it is a sphere instead of having 1 by 2 i am going to have the 2 by 5 so my expression will be what the natural frequency for a sphere under root m g r minus r m plus 2 by 5 m r square by r square so r square r square will go away m will also be cancelled out i will have here 7 by 5 so ultimately my expression will be what my expression will be 5 g by 7 r minus r and this is for sphere and this is for your cylinder so i hope that now you are having an understanding that how to write the equation for this system we have used the energy approach and we have ultimately landed with the expression of the natural frequency of your system i hope the session will be useful for you and with this note i am closing this session thank you